All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to chapel this week. Uh, welcome to those who are in person, but especially to those who are tuning in online. Uh, as, uh, as, as things kind of happen throughout this uh, pandemic, we try to be as flexible as possible. And thank you for those who are being flexible. And we're glad that you can join us. Uh, we know that, yeah, just through an abundance of caution that we have maybe more people who are tuning in online. So hopefully you guys can have a good chat there. Um, <laughs> directly or, or all together. Um, but we're glad that we can, uh, we can pause in our week and do this. Um, we'll, we'll have some announcements about some of the other special chapels that are coming up uh, for the rest of this month. Uh, this is one of them and you're gonna hear from a couple of our graduates. <laughs> of course, I am one of them as well as Clifford Drake. So um, we will be your speakers for the morning. And uh, this might be a, a shorter chapel because we don't actually have any, any worship music this morning, but I do want to um, uh, to read a, a Psalm for you and, and a prayer. Uh, but before that, I was gonna mention that I was looking at my calendar and Mother's Day is already next month. So I know it's, it's got some time, but just so for those of us who maybe need a couple of, of extra reminders, it's always good to do that. So Mother's Day is coming up um, and say and, and send your mom a text or a call this week if you have the time. Um, the, the, the passage I'm going to be reading is just a, a few verses from Psalm 119. Um, and they and they're about comfort during times of affliction and there's uh, this little book that I have. It's a uh, Celtic devotions and it's, it's a co compilation of different prayers uh, and, and devotional thoughts that were, that are tied in with uh, the Celtic Christians. And uh, for this, uh, for this Psalm, uh, I, I really like the prayer that's tied with it afterwards. So um, Psalm 119, starting at verse 49. Remember your word to your servants. You have given me hope through it. This is my comfort in my affliction. Your promise has given me life. The arrogant constantly ridicule me, but I do not turn away from your instruction. Um, and the prayer that I want to pray over us this morning has to do with God and his protection. And I know that for, for those uh, that in our community that have, uh, that have been ex exposed to some, uh, to, to others who have, who had COVID and, and even some who may have tested positive, uh, definitely Prayers like these seem to uh, have, carry extra weight. And, and so the prayer, uh, the prayer is this. God with me lying down. God with me rising up. God with me in each ray of light. Nor I a ray of joy without him. Nor one ray without him. Christ with me sleeping. Christ with me waking. Christ with me watching. Every day and night. Every day and night. God with me protecting the Lord with me directing, the Spirit with me strengthening forever and forevermore, ever and evermore. Amen. And so just join me in prayer as we begin chapel this morning. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word that is, um, that is a source of comfort and of truth. And, and I pray that during uh, times such as this, Lord, that these uh, these promises would ring true and that we would be able to cling even more closely to it, Father. We think of those who are in our community who are um, battling illness, and um, and I pray that you would give them an extra measure of your grace, Father, as 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 for those who are students, especially as they as they strive to continue uh, to to finish well and complete their assignments and uh, and continue on with their studies, Lord. I, I pray that you would give them the strength and perseverance that they will need to be able to do so. Uh, and I, I pray for our staff and faculty as well, Father, as they are striving to lead during this time. And, uh, and, and I thank you for how you have placed each individual in their specific roles for such a time as this, Lord. Um, may we as a community be able to come together, remember each other in prayer. And, and I thank you for this morning and I pray for, uh, for your spirit to be here uh, in this room and online in, in, as we all gather together as a community. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good morning. Good morning, guys in the room and everybody online. We are excited to be here because this is one of our favorite chapel days when we have graduating students speak to us and share, us, share with us about their journey 
in this moment in training for ministry and their calling and what's beyond here. So I get to introduce to you Clifford Drakes. Clifford is my friend. He, his family and our family kind of started life in Cochrane at the same time. And Clifford and his family come from Barbados as an international student to be with us, which is an incredible thing. What I've learned about Clifford is as he's pursued his Bachelor of Christian Ministry degree, he has been faithful and tenacious. And I think that his life before Canada was so rich and full in ministry that this is just kind of put a cap on what's next. And I look forward to seeing what God does beyond this time in your life. And then I get to introduce to you David Ong, who is my friend, a partner in ministry, a co-worker, my daughter-in-law's brother, therefore I think we're related. Um, David, a word I would describe for him is creative, and, and um, I think it's a word, ingenuitive, no, that's not a word, but being able to take things and make impact out of moments and live them well. And so he's earning his Master of Christian Studies degree, and he's going to be able to take that and and use it on our campus, use it beyond here in ministry. And I'm excited that you get to hear from both of these gentlemen today. So you can take it from there, whoever goes first. Good morning. Good morning to all of those who are in here in person, and good morning to the ones that are online, and good afternoon for those that might be watching it in a different time zone. Maybe even good night. <laughs> but I'm really happy to be here. I really appreciate the opportunity to share um, the gospel with you. Um, I want to share about my, my life, but understand for me, my life is not very important compared to Christ. So what I will share will be primarily, primarily be about Christ. I will fit into that, into God's plan and Christ's plan as I share. And so I want to start by saying when I think of the journey that I've taken here over the past three years, three and a half years, I, can, I, I have narrowed down the things I've learned into two things, primarily two. And that is faith and being faithful. And I've chosen a text that we want us to look at um, in 2 Timothy. And we're going to look at it from the scriptures. I have ESV, a, a slide up, so we can look at it from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse. start from verse 8, and we will go to verse 14 of that chapter and then we we'll go on to chapter 2 and we we'll look at verse 1 and 2. So you can follow with me as I read. It says, Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling. Not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. And which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the song words that you have heard from me, in faith and in love that are in Christ Jesus by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. Let's look, let's look at chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. It says, 
You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. And so we look at this passage of scripture and we recognize that this is Paul speaking to Timothy, his spiritual son. It's Paul is speaking about Christ and the gospel of Christ. And Paul is sharing the confidence he has because he believed in Christ. Now we think of well, how did Paul believe in Christ? You know of Paul's conversion, he wrote to Damascus. You know Paul being pretty much taught by Christ directly, as he said in his testimony. And there's a whole life that Paul has lived where he has been sharing the gospel. So Paul is sharing not only from his what he has what has been downloaded into his spirit from Christ and what he had learned through his teachings, but he's also learning from the experiences that he's having in sharing the gospel. In this, set, in this setting, of course, we're talking about a situation where there's suffering, there's persecution, there's false teachings, and in that context, Paul is encouraging Timothy, his spiritual son. Um, and that's important for me, my, my journey here was filled with faith. It had to be a faith journey. I was coming into a totally different environment that I was never accustomed to, a climate that I could not imagine, honestly. Um, from a warm tropical island to a cold country is a journey. And there were lots of other things that would have encouraged the use of faith. Um, and I came with my family. So we pretty much shut down all that was happening in Barbados and we came to Canada because we believed as where God was leading us. I still believe that today. Well, that faith journey, I, I want to speak of it as primarily not only an incident or a, a, a space in time, but in reality, trust that we have is a daily thing. You have to trust God every single day of our lives. And there's a danger in only trusting God when we go through certain circumstances, certain trials, certain tribulations. You know, we tend to, when, we, when there's a crisis, we tend to kind of trust God then or put our faith in God. And we forget that we need to trust God when there's no crisis in our daily living because in reality, our daily life is really dependent upon Christ. I say to people that every breath I take is because Christ allows me to take that breath. And that is true for all of us. So our trust should really be a continual thing. And that is something that I've learned coming here, more so than even before, because I was a totally different environment and I really needed to trust God day by day by day. And that goes right into the present time and into the future. And believe me, I still need to trust Him. The other thing I want to talk about, apart from the trust in Christ, which is evidently important, is being entrusted with the gospel. And I want to focus on the verse that is uh, in 12, verse 12, that is, sorry, in chapter 1, where we see Paul dealing with both of these elements. He says, and I'm going to pick it up from the but. He says, but I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he's able to guard until that day what he has been, what has been entrusted to me. And that's important because what Paul has done right there is put in that, in that sentence the reality of both things, trusting God and being faithful to God and his word. He says he's not ashamed. Now here Paul is probably writing from a place of imprisonment in Rome. So he understands suffering. He's in a position right now where he really needs to trust God. And he's saying to Timothy, you're in a situation which is probably similar to me in terms of Paul's teachings and probably sufferings and persecution and so on. So trust God. And, and, and the reason why I love this, this verse so much is because he says, I know whom I have believed. Paul is speaking here about relationship. Paul is saying because of the relationship I have with Christ, I can be confident. I can be sure of who I believe. 
And then he goes on to say, because of that, he says that he's able, Christ is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. So Paul is recognizing that the gospel that he has been carrying all this while is really being entrusted to him by Christ, by God. And he knows that that success of that gospel being carried as it should be is dependent upon God. And that's how we operate. I do not depend on me. I depend on God. And I always pray, God, whenever I open my mouth to speak, especially the people, Christians, whoever, let my words be guarded. Let them be guided by Christ. And so we see Paul is doing that right here. Now, Timothy has a, a, a slightly different experience because what's happening with Timothy is that now he's being told by Paul, you watch me, you've heard me teach you, you've heard me preach. Now, embrace what I've taught and allow that to be your guide. He says in verse 13, he went to Timothy and he says, follow the pattern of the song, of, of the, song the words that you have heard me, or sorry, that you've heard from me in faith and in love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. Here again, we see that similar thing. He's saying guard it. Now, Paul already says that Christ is guarding the spirit, the gospel in him. And now Paul is saying you guard it. So it's not like we don't have any responsibility. We have a responsibility, but that responsibility is empowered, is enabled by Christ, by the Holy Spirit. And so you see Paul is encouraging Timothy to work it through that way. Now, in context so to, to, to the, the, the campus here, I had a similar experience. I came and there were pro professors that taught me and they would have been entrusted with the gospel of Christ and then, then imparted it to me and obviously to all the students. And so I felt that weight of being responsible being faithful to that gospel. So being the way of the being faithful to that gospel causes me to one, spend a lot of time in the gospel, in the, in the word of God, learning the word of God, understanding the word of God and let it get into my system because that word needs to flow through me. And it needs to flow through me accurately as much as I can again by the work of the Holy Spirit. And so for all of us that have been students or are students, we have to think about that. No, there are other subjects that we do that aren't necessarily grounded in, in the word in terms of being the core. Um, and, those, and, and all that carries a measure of knowledge. But for me, knowledge is a natural part of being in a seminary and of being in a college and being in a school. But for me, the real thing is grabbing hold of the gospel, the word of God. I hear it being taught, I hear it being expounded and explained by the professors. And for me, I'll share this with you. One of the things that really grabbed me, you know, no time is getting. The only thing that really grabbed me is that these professors that taught me and taught us didn't just have a theoretical and academic knowledge of the word of God, the gospel, which is important, but they also had, most of them, if not all, a very practical and experiential knowledge. Most of them would have had situations where they were on, was on mission fields or pastors or something like that. And they brought that with them. So that like, like, like Paul and Timothy, Timothy was not just getting Paul's words, but he was, he was seeing Paul's experience. He was getting some of Paul's experience. And so for me, it was getting the same thing. I was not just getting the words from a professor, but I was getting the experience that they've had over the, over the years. And that brings that creates context for what, what, what we are learning. That creates context for what we are embracing. And so for me, that was very, very important. So when I look at the reality that that now is being passed on to us, and we have to now guard the word. We now have to be faithful to the word. Just like there have been, the professors have been, just like Timothy has been, just like Paul has been. So we see it's almost like a relay race. A real race that will never end until Christ comes or until he calls us home individually. We're always in that race and we're always passing on a baton to others. And because the gospel needs to continue to be shared, the gospel needs to continue to be heard. And in, in the light of what is happening in the world, we, we all know the, the pandemic has the world almost topsy-turvy. And there's really gospel is more needed because people need to hear about there's, a, there's an answer, there's a hope. 
And so for us, we have this responsibility to take that gospel and really take it to the world in various ways. And again, we have seen the use of, of internet and, and on, online things like Zoom and so on more than we've ever known before. And so that's a great opportunity for us to share the gospel where we don't even have to travel to a place to share the gospel. And then the other thing about that is that, again, someone can hear your gospel over and over again if you just click on it over and over again. And long after we've gone, uh, or long as Christ hasn't come, <laughs> others will be able to hear that gospel by clicking on a website or on a um, podcast or something. So we have the opportunity and we have the responsibility. And for me, that is important. We need to pass it on as well. We can't drop the baton on our, our state. We need to pass it on, just like it's been passed on all down through the generations, right through to these great professors who taught us. We have to pass it on to those that will come behind us. And that's an awesome responsibility, as far as I'm concerned. So let me close up my view. But the two things that I really must say that I have narrowed down my, my, my learning from this great campus too. I really appreciate you, you, you guys. I want to know all that. I really appreciate the professors and the staff. I mean, it's a small campus, but believe me, it is a beautiful campus. The interaction, the fellowship is great. And I really appreciate that. So here we go. The first thing that I, I would say, like I said earlier, trust in Christ is a lifetime and an everyday lesson. That's what I can say. A lifetime and an everyday lesson. Many that would have been dealing with COVID, some, like, like it has been said, may have had it, or some may have been exposed to it, or some just have been impacted by it economically because of loss of jobs or something like that. You've got to trust Christ. You've got to trust God. You've got to trust God. And why, and why trust God? <laughs> well, for a number of reasons. First of all, we see in, in Hebrews, uh, where the writer of Hebrews says, the just shall live by faith. And again, in, I think in, in, in verse, in, in, in chapter 11, he says, without faith is impossible to please God. So we as Christians need to really embrace faith, especially when things seem so chaotic. The other reason is that if we look at, at, at how God does things, and, and for me, it's like God says in, 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 in Isaiah, well, Isaiah says in chapter 55, I think it is, God's thoughts are not our thoughts, and his ways are not our ways. Yeah. And so when we look at situations like even what's happening around the world, I mean, the world is in real chaos. I mean, just over by where I came from, Barbados, we've had a volcano, a vol a volcano ex 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 exploring um, in St. Vincent, which is just 100 or so miles from our country. And St. Vincent is right now in a mess, that volcano eruption. And Barbados is in a mess because all the ash is blowing over by Barbados. And so Barbados is dealing with trying to get rid of all this ash and clean up this ash. And of course, the atmosphere is toxic with that. Along with the COVID and along with the economic situation, because we've lost our tourist, tourism department pretty much. Tourists have stopped coming to Barbados, so the economy has plummeted. The economy has, has plummeted. And so all these things, you know, and you look at life and you say, wow, God, what, what next? But then you got to take a deep breath and you got to say, God is still in charge. God is still, I mean, nothing happens, and this my belief strong, nothing happens unless God allows it or ordains it. And God wasn't surprised that COVID-19 turned up. He knew it was going to turn up even before he said, let there be lights, as far as I'm concerned. So I have to trust God, and I do that. And I encourage us to trust God in the midst of any trial, COVID, anything else that you're going through. And secondly, like I said, being faithful, being faithful to Christ and being faithful to the gospel. That he has entrusted to us through great professors, like I said earlier, and teachers, and, and through the history of, of time, through the Bible, through the apostles, through Christ himself, and all down through the line. We have to be faithful. We can be faithful because the Holy Spirit enables us to be faithful. And that is what I hold on to. Not in my own strength. My own strength wouldn't do it. It's Christ in me. The Spirit of Christ. Holy Spirit. That enables me, empowers me to be able to be faithful to his word. And that's what I want to encourage us to do. Embrace the Holy Spirit, embrace the gospel, embrace Christ and let him be our strength. And so let me close 
because I don't want to take up all the time. I, I, I have grown so much to love the de doxology that comes from Jude. I want to close with that. And it says, Jude 24. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. God bless you. I really encourage you to keep the faith and be faithful to the gospel. Amen. Thank you very much, Clifford. I appreciate those words quite a bit. Uh, Clifford, I remember another time when you were up here, actually, and that's when you were reporting for Seminary Day a while back. And I think during that time for that year, you'd actually gone to Seminary Day with the Peacocks and you head up to Worsley uh, area. And as Clifford told it, uh, that, that was the longest he'd ever been in a car because Barbados is is an island and so there's only so much room on that and so the the distance from here to Worsley which is northern Alberta like six plus hours or so uh Clifford could have traveled around his island multiple times or five times in the distance it took from here to travel from here Cochrane to Worsley so uh we absolutely brother are just so glad that you are uh, God brought you to this school and that uh, you are keeping the faith and so Thank you for those words. That's a. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dr. Peacock was just sharing that he, Clifford kept texting his wife during I drive and said that we're still driving as a, oh, ab absolutely. It's a, <laughs> Canada's pretty big. Uh, well, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm back. Uh, during this time, I'd actually like to take off my director of admissions hat and my chapel coordinator hat and just put on my student hat or my graduate, imaginary graduate cap um, as I will be walking across the stage this spring. Um, and so a little bit about me is those, for those of you who don't know, my background is that I grew up in Toronto uh, and then my family moved to Saskatoon and that's where we, I grew up and, uh, and, and, and graduated high school and, and that's still where my parents are at and most of my siblings. I'm the second oldest of nine kids and that is that was just that was just life for us but now as I get further on in life and as I'm a parent of of, of two boys and one girl who's coming next week uh, which is very exciting I am more and more in awe of my parents uh, and especially my mom I guess for 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 birthing and raising nine kids and so maybe that's why I give her a shout out uh, earlier on but yeah I grew up in Saskatoon and I graduated um, from high school there and then I after that I attended Miller College of the Bible where I finished my bachelor's there and uh, and actually worked there in the admissions departments for uh, a number of years uh, and then I also graduated from the University of Saskatchewan with my bachelor's in psychology as during that time that uh college david was thinking about medicine and and, and the sciences a little bit more and uh and, and god kind of just changed my my heart and my mind on that a little bit but when i first interacted with with csbs and c um i i came as as an employee in the admissions department. And so uh, in 2016, I was uh, newly married that summer as well. And it was just starting a job here. So I moved from Saskatchewan to Alberta. And my wife was, um, was an Alberta girl um, and she lived in Airdrie and she was finishing her nursing degree uh, in Calgary. So it w worked out really well for me to be able to to come work at the at the school here and I had known about the school just through the different Bible colleges and seminaries in here in the provinces uh, but it was I, I was quickly ushered into the um, into the community and into just the rhythms of life here uh, and I really really enjoyed it and so I mean as we fast forward now uh, uh, we're, my wife and I have bought a house in Cochrane and we have three kids and we're, and I'm graduating with a master's in Christian studies. And so a lot of people asked, you know, early on if I came to Cochrane for school and my answer was, was that yes, but indirectly because I truly did come for employment first. But in that first semester when I was speaking to Dr. Rob I, and I asked if 
I would be able to take classes uh, because I do love learning um, and I, I like being in the classroom. And he was very, he was very pleased that I was interested in taking courses um, at the school. But I think I was also pleased that I could still keep my Amazon Prime student discount as well. So it was a true win-win situation. But in all <laughs> seriousness, I was <laughs> also excited to be able to take seminary courses and to study the Bible and theology again. And I, I, I had a lot to learn as I, as I look back at that time. Uh, I really, uh, I really appreciated um, being being in class as a way to, uh, to to learn the culture of the school and to learn uh, a bit more of the of the product of the courses that I was also being able to tell others about. And so when I w was looking back and thinking of, oh man, what? How, how do I compress like my five years of part-time studies into, into a chapel time explaining of what I've learned? Uh, I think God just gave me a word and that word was leadership. And that, that's the word that I think that really does define my time here um, at the school. And I say at the time, and I'm, I'm not going anywhere as far as I know. And so as, if the Lord and Dr. Rob will allow me, I'll still be serving here uh, in the admissions department for a while, but looking to see as my time as a student has come to an end and am able to reflect on that. Um, the, the vision of our school is to train leaders for tough places. And I, I say that a lot. I get to say that in my job when I'm on the phone, I type it out in emails when I'm corresponding with, with new students. And, and it's, it, it is a thing that helps define our school, but how do we see, how do we as a school know, yes, we, we have done this. We have trained leaders for tough places. We're able to see that through the students, through our alumni, through it, able to, um, to to get reports on how our alumni are doing and what places God has led them to. And so it's 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 always a blessing when we're able to hear from our alumni, like uh, like some others that you've seen here uh, in chapel, like Caesar Para um, and 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 others who have have sat in these chairs and and sat in the classroom and written similar tests and 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 whatnot because they are in, in tough places. They are going to where God has, has called them. And so when I, when I look back at that, um, another, uh, one of the great ways that I think I can, I can see how I learned and grew in leadership is that I can look at our professors. I can look at our faculty. And one of the things that I get the privilege of saying is that, is that our professors are our curriculum. And so that's something that I've learned here is that the people that you have on, on staff and on faculty are the ones who really define the things that you get to learn. And, and so as I was preparing for this, I just looked at, at my class notes that I'd taken over the years. And, and even as I start off here, one of the things that I learned from Dr. Glenn Watson um, in, in the preaching class in, is that he said that preaching is like cooking. Uh, you prep the meal, bring out the pots and pans, slice and dice the ingredients, but you only bring out the ready product. You cut up some vegetables, but you don't use all of it. Only some of it makes it to the plate. Um, and so in that context of learning about how to, uh, uh, how, how, to, how to preach and how to prepare a sermon, hopefully this short talk <laughs> will be a little bit like that, where you can take the things that, uh, that God has, has taught me over the years and use it to benefit your life as well. And hopefully you can be blessed by that. Um, I was able to learn about leading uh, and leading with integrity and competence by looking at our professors. One of the things that Dr. Kevin uh, Peacock said in biblical interpretation class is that if you want to preach the truth, you might as well get it right. And, and so often the, the level of academic excellence that our, our faculty strive for and they teach both at the college and seminary level is something that um, I think can be uh, a lesson that we can have in other areas of life of always striving for excellence, not for our own glory, but to reflect glory back to God. And, and so what does that look like? That means having proper time management, checking your sources, <clears throat> making sure that you're accurately representing, um, uh, representing the truth or representing that, uh, the, the task at hand well. And, um, I, I get to see that also in our in, in in Dr. Steve Parsons, who I've not taken a class with him, unfortunately, but um, through preparing for chapel, um, he is one of the faithful servants who is always here or early in the morning, even before I'm here, making sure that the the equipment is set up, 
making sure that the slides are ready, reminding me if I've forgotten something and checking, uh, and also making sure that those who are zooming in online and being able to 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 tune in that way can see and hear everything that is happening. And so I appreciate just the uh, the level of excellence, that little task that are that happens every week. Chapel happens every week for us during the school year, um, and through the faithfulness uh, of, of Dr. Steve and also Kathy uh, Seidler, who's in our library. She's the one who helps prepare the any of the worship slides or other slides. Um, in these faithful tasks, I see leading with with excellence. Leading with others is another another factor in this. Uh, our school is part of the CNBC, the Canadian National Baptist Convention. And part of my job is being able to go visit and partner with other churches and ministries and in our convention across Canada. And, and wow, I think something that defines our CNBC churches is resilient Christ followers. Um, we, have, we have pastors who have given uh, uh, years of their life to to serve their church, to serve their communities. Um, we have new church planters who are passionate in their field here in Calgary, uh, Cochrane, um, BC, uh, Saskatchewan, all across our nation. We have, we have church planters, many who are students with us, and I've just been able to, wow, learn from them and be able to see how God is equipping them and sending them out. And and, and we get to learn from each other in the classroom or we, when we ask for prayer requests, we get to hear about what God is doing, the highlights and the challenges in the churches and the ministries uh, around us. And so, so, so pay attention, take, take advantage of that students as you're able to do that. Um, and, and remember the ways that God has answered questions and how you get a front row seat to be, to be seeing the, the spirit at work across our country. Um, we also have um, a lot of generous givers who support our, our school also who attend these churches. And I get the opportunity to, to hear from our alumni, to hear from others who will ask about the school because they are also committed to the, to the work that happens here. In a, a course that we, we offer now online and you don't sit in person anymore, but we offered a class called Baptist Distinctives that Barry Nelson taught actually. And that was a, a very helpful class for me in my first semester here as a staff and new student. And one of the things that, that I remember Barry said from that class, and as I had taken note of it, it we were learning that conventions are like friend groups for, for churches. And uh, in Barry's words, a friend does not have authority over another friend, but they do have influence. And so in that way, you have freedom not to do whatever you want, but to follow the leadership of Christ and and so through that, he was giving the point that we as a group of churches are able to influence each other and also encourage each other and spur each other on. And so I've been able to see that um, amongst our, our students as there are times when our students attend different churches, but when one, one church has something, um, whether it's an event or uh, they just have a work project, one student puts out the call to other students and they're able to come together and help and lead. And sometimes they're all in the same conventions, others not. But what a powerful example of Christ at work um, and we as a body of Christ coming together. And uh, another thing that Barry had also said in specifically about Baptists is that Baptists are at their best when united in a core belief, but no matter what missions and evangelism is the focus for all Baptists. Um, and so I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that heritage that we have here at CSBSNC and how um, how through through chapel and through um, interactions that just happen throughout our semester, we're able to uh, to learn from other leaders and and come alongside of that. Of course, uh, when speaking about leadership, I can't uh, help but but think about Dr. Rob, who who is back in Canada, and so we're excited for that, and we'll we'll probably be seeing him very shortly in that in some of the upcoming events as we close out our school year, um, and. And I remember in, in church administration class, that was another, uh, that was a course that, um, that, uh, that I took because I was interested and I, I felt like I didn't know as much about that. And church administration can be one of those things where, where people feel like, um, it might not be as, as glamorous because oftentimes church administrators are not the ones who are at the front, uh, speaking. They're the ones who are, are emailing or calling or texting and making sure things are, are lined up. But one of the things that, <clears throat> 
Dr. Rob had said from the class is that the reason why he, why I am passionate about effective ministry management is because I believe that is a concrete measure of how well we love and minister to the church of Christ in the power of Christ. As spiritual administrators, we are held accountable by God for whether we see his people or simply use them to accomplish personal goals. And so, wow, what a, what, what a picture, of, again, of excellence and of leading well and of showing proper care for those around you, for acknowledging that God has given um, these people specific spiritual gifts to be able to benefit the rest of the body and how that we are held accountable to God for how we care for those in our um, that we are leading over. And, and I think Dr. Rob also does that well um, for us as a school in, in, in wanting to uh, to care for the school and even during this time of COVID, making sure that the school is taken care of, but uh, and also ultimately being able to carry out uh, the purpose of school to train train leaders and to make sure that all of, all of you, us students, are were able to finish the classes that we had uh, being offered. And so, um, just a couple of other things as far as that were tied into leadership. Um, one of, one of the big things that were, was very impactful for me was leading with grace and mercy. And I experienced that in one of my classes. It was my first online class that I was taking. And for, for one of those parts, we had a take home exam. And so I was, I was at my house. It was, it was, it was, it was later in the evening. And so I'd, I'd written the exam. I I'd completed it. Um, and I was about to submit it to send it in. But there was, there was one question that was just bothering me. It was bothering me. And I, 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 I thought like, oh, you know, the wording of this, I'm not sure what it's like. So I, I looked in my notes. I looked in my notes and I saw, I wanted to see what the wording of that was. And uh, in that moment, I, I committed academic dishonesty and I, I changed one of my answers and then I submitted it. And I knew as soon as I had done that, that, uh, that I grieved the, the spirit, that even in my own spirit, something was off. And that whole weekend, oh, it, it sat with me and everything that was described about sin as far as like sin being a master and sin being something that allows you to miss the mark or sin being something that separates you from God, all those things, yeah, weighed, weighed heavily on me and it was very real. And so I, I, I had to repent of that. I, I really did. And I, it wasn't even a question that for me, I knew that there, was, there, might have, there may have been other things at stake, but I knew first and foremost that I needed to make this right. I need to make this right with God and then with others. And so I, um, I that early on that week, I went into Dr. Steve Booth's office and I, I confessed that I had cheated and I, uh, I asked for forgiveness and I experienced grace. I experienced mercy and forgiveness from him. I experienced it from my professor when I went through him and I went through the, the, the proper pr process that was laid out for me to, to make things right. And it was, it, it was it was a big learning thing for me because I it wasn't even so much about the grade or the paper. It was that through my conversations with the professors, I knew that it was it was about my character, it was about my relationship with God and making that right. And so that that is a thing that even as now when I looked back at my at my transcript and I saw the grade that was changed to properly reflect my actions in that course, um, I look back at that and. And, and, I, and I feel a twinge of that, of that guilt, but then more so, I remember just that, the, the feeling of, of grace and of relief and just knowing that that is, again, a, just a, a small, small picture of what Christ did for us on the cross, of how we came as sinners and we were forgiven for all the wrong, all the wrong that we did and, and how Christ was as offering us this now, this life overflowing um, as a result. And so, um, in, in, in this, um, leadership, I'll just I'll finish off with this one. Leadership, I think is also very much defined, um, spiritual leadership. We know that it's moving people onto God's agenda as one of the main definitions in the spiritual leadership class, but don't forget students that you are also here because you were called by God. I, I, I believe that because I get to see that in my position at, and the admissions office, I get to hear the stories of students who have, have gone through crazy life experiences and, and God is bringing them here to Cochrane, whether in person or online. And they are able to, um, 
to, to, to say, David, I don't know what, what's next for me, but I think this is the next step. And I'm like, great, then use this time when you're studying God's word and when you're, when, when you're, when you're in the library or talking with students to be, to be figuring out where is God calling you? Where, how is he properly using the, the passions and the gifts to make an impact for the kingdom? And, and, with, and, and with that, um, one of the things in my spiritual leadership class was that there is no, was a quote that said, there's no greater source of influence for spiritual leaders than the manifest presence of God. And so God is the one who is the fuel in our tanks and the spirit of God is the one that is, is enabling us to, to make that difference in the kingdom and to be able to, um, to tell others about Christ. And in Dr. Susan's evangelism class, um, she said, one of the things that we learned from there is that in any successful gospel conversation, we ought to try and bring people one step closer. And in our actions, in, in, in the things that we comment online, in the, in the, in the people that we, that, we, that we look at who are in our circles, are we trying to bring those people one step closer to Christ? Um, I, I hope so. I hope that, that, that all of us are able to, to, be, to be doing those things. And uh, this all kind of is, is a bit, was a bit of a hodgepodge of the things that, that I've learned here at, at seminary. But from so many uh, of our other professors, uh, whether it's Dr. Don uh, or the Morrises um, and uh, Dr. Steve Booth, our academic dean, um, we, are, we as students have been able to learn from some, um, from, from some amazing leaders. And now as the, the, the balance of power has shifted into now as you are becoming alumni and graduates yourselves and to go on to become leaders in other places. Let's remember the things that, that we have learned here and, and not forget them. And let's remember that we have, um, we have that calling, which is, which is the thing that ought to move us and that ought to spur us on into uh, to taking risks for the kingdom and to, to serving with as much as we have to give uh, lovingly to others around us. And so I just want to end with uh, a verse from Colossians chapter three, two verses, cha chapter three, verses 16 and 17. It's, it is this, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your heart. And whatever you do, whether in word or do, deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I'm glad that God brought me to Canadian Southern Baptist Seminary and College, and I pray that we will all continue to be faithful to finish well in the task that he has called us to. Thank you. Clifford and David, thank you very much. It was really, really rewarding to hear about your journey, what you've learned, and so thank you very much. Um, the next two chapels, that's all we have left of this school year, are very special chapels too. Next week is preaching chapel, so the seminary level preaching class. Um, um, an award is given for the person who I think the class actually votes and the professor affirms is, is the recipient of the preaching award for this school year. So that person will be announced and will preach that message for you next week. The week after that is awards chapel. So many students get awards at the end of the school year and many on the Dean's list will be recognized. So you will not wanna miss the next two Wednesdays for chapel, whether you're here or online. Um, I want to close with prayer, but I wanna remind you and encourage you in a posture of how to go into the next three weeks to the end of the school year. And that is um, the posture of open hands. Do you remember when Dr. Watson spoke in chapel of Hannah and how she poured out her heart to the Lord and she opened her hands and she let go and, and she remained um, that way before the Lord. So I would encourage you, um, even today as you pray and as you sit with your scriptures and your textbooks and um, Netflix, whatever it is that your day is full of, open your hands to receive from the Lord and to let him take the things that are not yours to carry. So would you stand with me? And you're welcome to open your hands, even as I close us in prayer and as we um, leave this place. 
God, thank you for the example of Hannah. Thank you that she opened her heart to you and released to you. Thank you for our professors and faculty who've been honored by Clifford and David's words. Thank you for what they have um, invested in our lives. Thank you for David and Clifford and those other um, graduates who are preparing to end this chapter of their life. I pray your blessing on them as you um, lay before them um, the next steps in their calling. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for grace and mercy. And today we say we need you and we release and let go of the things that you alone should carry. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Have a great Wednesday.